thank you Siddhu. Uh, I told Siddhu that I was impressed by the trending of presentation of the first session. So I have also discerned a few trends, not 11 trends, but 6 trends uh, of nuclear discourse on proliferation. So we are into the 14th year of 21st century discussing proliferation. And it is almost 70 years after the use of nuclear weapons in Japan. And before that, the nuclear weapons had been fabricated. So it's more than 70 years that nuclear weapons really proliferated, I should say, or spread or developed. And we are also into the 44th year of the entry into force of NPT, the treaty that has been defining proliferation to a great extent. So what we are realizing and what the, tra the trend we are discerning is that proliferation has become or it has seemed like an eternity. It has acquired some timelessness. It is not going to go away. And why I am arguing if we see the trend or you can see the discourse in another domain of or in another realm of weapons of mass destruction that is chemical weapons convention. If you read Chemical Weapons Convention, there is no mention of word proliferation or non-proliferation. But of late, the discourse or you can say the or you can see the arguments or the statements have started coming that we have to have the arrest of proliferation. And it is a very unique case of proliferation that generally when we talk about proliferation or non-proliferation in the realm of nuclear weapons, it is pre-disarmament factor, phenomenon. But now this proliferation has also entered into no post-disarmament. It, it is becoming a post-disarmament phenomenon also. If we really go through the debate or even discussions or even statements relating to chemical weapons convention. So that's why I'm saying this first trend I'm discerning is the eternity or timelessness of proliferation discourse. Second issue is uh, trend I could say which Lewis uh, Patricia uh, pointed out the fixed or dynamic the definition if you go by NPT definition it appears something fixed any country which tests after January 1st 1967 or we acquires nuclear weapon is a proliferator before that good people good countries so this gives a uh, this gives a kind of understanding that it is fixed, but I agree with uh, Patricia, it is not fixed, it is dynamic. And she pointed out two ish reasons for seeing it as a dynamic category. I, I, I agree with her and I add two more points. One is the development of technology and second new actors, which Siddhu indicated, the intention of non-state actors acquiring nuclear weapons and we have also started calling that intention as a case of proliferation, new risk of proliferation. The moment now I come to the third issue and the third trend that is what is this proliferation a risk or a threat? The dominant discourse is that it has become a risk. When we talk of risk then it looks harmless not intentionally threatening anyone, not intentionally harming any any country. It is just consequences of an action, maybe unintended. But in reality, is it so? That we have to ask. And this there is a thin line, very complex line and very complex phenomenon. But I believe and I consider this risk uh, has got the tendency to become a threat if it is not managed. So this is the fourth trend I'm saying there is no bound, there should not be any boundary between risk and the threat, which has somehow in the latest discourse is being treated as so, that proliferation is a risk, not a threat, because no one is intentionally harming. This is the fourth, uh, third point I wanted to make. Fourth is somehow the discourse is, has been techno-legal in nature. And the pol old politics is basically determining this nature. The politics which was prevalent before 19th, 
in 19th century before that. Somehow it has been dominating in shaping this nature of proliferation discourse. We are talking about that nuclear materials, Sidhu talked about nuclear materials, dangerous nuclear materials which may be useful for expensive, useful for making nuclear weapons. There are design and testing problems, delivery systems, ballistic missiles, all these we are using at this and then at the same time we are using that nuclear fuel cycle is, is a problem with any country mastering nuclear fuel cycle. Immediately we, can, we become concerned that it will it will be a proliferation problem. There is again a space program, development of a space program is also considered a proliferation problem, challenge, producing dual use technology is also a challenge. So all these technical issues are coming uh, and dominating the discourse. And at the same time, what do we find? The address or the tool which is supposed to counter is basically legal in nature. NPT, CTBT, how to control fuel cycle, all these factors are coming. So these are basically controlling this legal, techno-legal nature of, of the discourse which I wanted to collect. Fifth is what my friend Rajesh talked about, distraction. The distraction means non-state actors. Non-state actors of late of, if you see, since 9-11 incidents and especially after nuclear security summit started, process started taking place. This distraction is basically dominating. So we are the non-proliferation -proli debate, I, I should rather say. And we saw the nuclear security summit, which summit process, which has been dominating. But in the future, in the future, International Atomic Energy Agency may become the center uh, because we are uncertain about the process, the security summit process. So this is this is another trend which I see. There's many more countries are uh, nowadays uh, started adhering to all the tools which are supposed to address this particular risk. So this is, this is another trend, but there is another danger, there is danger associated with which I consider the sixth trend, the danger of over projection. The one over this, every science and technology should not become a threat and we should not over rely on one tool. Like some people argue that the moment you have got independent nuclear safety agency, something like all the problems will be solved. Uh, if you sign all the treaties, all the problems will be solved. This is not the case. So I think that factor also should also be taken into account. Should we how many minutes? You've got another three minutes. Three minutes. So now I will just come what ought to be done. And very fast I will be moving on that also. This is five, just five points and I have to finish in three minutes. First is the need for the sober assessment of the risk. Over projection of the risk may not help and this could be a factor of every day talking about the crisis in the regimes because you cannot control science, just every science cannot can be controlled. You have to make an assessment and, and, and we have to move beyond the legal technical uh, uh, narrative and revisit old politics. The old, this legal technological imperative has been quite managerial in nature. And in the first session we talked about morality, moral aspects. That is missing. And the idea seems just to control, constrain, coerce, use anyone violating safeguards, add some more safeguards, but impose sanctions. And then we are talking about there is a sanction system is failing. So there is there is problem there, and we this this narrative is just trying to avoid crisis and work from the short term order and stability. And at best, arms control or nuclear arms reduction is agreed as an interim measure to constrain nuclear forces and reduce their role in international politics. But again, this is this is not the solution. Nuclear disarmament disarmament is treated as a long term goal not an immediate policy objective and this here lies the problem so basically we have to we have to make nuclear disarmament the goal ultimate goal why and it will be useful for addressing new proliferation challenges or you can say risk whatever you like to call a new proliferation threat in what ways 
we talked about non-state actors and Sidhu also talked about challenges or talked about countries, many ideas which are coming and many of the ideas are coming that there should be reduction, there should be some materials are dangerous, these materials should may not be allowed to be used. But as I told, that's, you just cannot control science and will not allow science to be used peace, peacefully. There will be peaceful users of science. So when we talk about control of reprocessing, there will be resistance because certain countries will be employing it in its nuclear, civil nuclear energy program as India is doing. India then will be resisting even if it doesn't want to develop nuclear weapons but it will not accept the idea such idea which, has, which is being projected that you have to control somehow minimize or end separated plutonium. This is one of the, one of the ideas which were projected in nuclear knowledge summit or in, in many of the writings uh, by people who are working on nuclear security. So th these problems are coming. So the moment we have got nuclear disarmament, there will be better acceptability and legitimacy of many new arrangements. You can have stringent arrangements, stringent safeguards and it will be accepted. And many contentious issues which we are facing today can be resolved. So this is, this is my another uh, proposal which I am talking and for last, first I uh, will come. Even if we agree about nuclear disarmament, the most important issue is what will be the interim measure? Because we all know it is not coming to take place tomorrow. We will have to have a road map. And what are arrangements during this, this period? If you just say that some people, some countries will simply give up their nuclear weapons and some will just retain for some time. Second issue which comes up is the number. And number is, will be contested. So some, some major, some interim arrangement needs to be put in place. Thank you.